All right, guys. So there's a few things I want to talk to you guys about that kind of frustrated me when I started taking this head apart. All right. So obviously you guys know I'm a YouTube technician, man. Everything I do, I learn is through online research. Just because this is my hobby and it's easier to learn a hobby that you're interested in than going to school and learning math, science, history, and all those things you don't really care about. Sorry for the dogs. So online, I've been looking at people checking the valves and the cylinder here, the cylinder head, to make sure it's good, to make sure it's not leaking. And I've what what I've seen people do is pour water into the, these areas right here and to see if the water is going to seep out either from the intake side or from the exhaust side. If it does seep out, that means you got a bad seat. The valves aren't seated properly and that's a problem. You're losing compression. You're not getting the combustion you need. So that's fine. I noticed two of these valves on cylinder one and just the hair on cylinder two being lifted just a little bit but mostly on cylinder one we have determined and i'm like there's a huge leak right over here on the valves why aren't they not closing properly is there a problem with the cylinder head is there a problem with the the cylinder one piston did these things come in contact with each other why is this not closing well later i found out that it's normal for valves to overlap. So what that means is your intake and exhaust cams for a small duration of period before they close, they both are open slightly to scavenge out the gases. This fresh air that comes in from the valves, intake valves, actually helps push the old burned exhaust gases out. So having four valves open is absolutely normal. It's called valve or camshaft overlap. And you can see the camshafts all have grooves and lobes in them. And they're all made that way to have a specific duration, a specific height of the lobe to open up a valve a specific amount. You don't want the valves to come in contact with the pistons while everything is in motion. So the only way you can actually test those valves, make sure they're really sealing, is to get rid of that overlap that we currently are experiencing. And the only way to close those valves is to take off the cam caps and remove the camshafts themselves. That way there's no load on the rocker arm and on the valve springs. That way you can do a good test. Cause I wanna show you guys something real quick. So that's cylinder one. Cylinder two, just a tiny leak. Cylinder three, one of the valves is open a little bit. Cylinder four is nice and tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn over Hey! All right, exhaust side, cylinder number one. We can see the light coming through. Cylinder two looks to be good. Cylinder three looks to be good. Cylinder four looks to be good. So I'm sure that has something to do with the seating. So what I just wanna show you guys right now is I'm gonna move the cam gear via this crescent wrench and i'm just going to show you guys how the valves are opening on the other side uh, pretty cool to see so even though this is cylinder one two three four the actual crankshaft and firing order is one three four and two so you'll see these move in that order there you go that's the intake side cylinder one Uh, you got intake side cylinder three. Intake side cylinder four. And you can see they're opening up quite a bit, at least 15 millimeters. Cylinder two. With those valves to show you how much they're opening up so 
So this is the exact same process for the exhaust side as well. And remember, when the timing chain is on, the cam gears are on, all of this moves in sync, both the intake and exhaust valves. So long story short guys, just uh, I hope you don't get discouraged when things don't go your way or if you don't know something, just do your research or whatever you can get online, that always helps. Now this is a very simple engine, right French? Yep, very simple engine, it's got no variable valve timing, uh, variable valve timing heads get a little bit more complicated because they got valves that adjust on the camshaft depending on oil pressure and such just like VTEC um, and VVTI and all these different companies come out with their own variable valve timing names but it's pretty much all the same function it changes the camshaft slope or the valve and how aggressively it opens or closes the valve so again I'm glad I got this motor to work on to tear apart to learn on because it's pretty much got a very simple design as simple as it gets so it's only gonna get harder from here with better engines more sophisticated technology but anyway I'm gonna take this thing off right over here at the end of this camshaft I'm not sure what it is this camshaft does not have it I'm not sure exactly what it is if you guys do know what it is comment down below it is camshaft driven and in the next video we are gonna be trying to pressure wash or well, not even pressure wash because we got no water or pressure washer right now in the winter but we're gonna try to degrease this thing and then clean it up a little bit so that way it's easier to work on it because just looking at this thing Man, it is nasty. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. So it might be nice to own a jet plane. I'm gonna do it all for you. Come along and see it's true. But the world is pretty cold. You might need a sweater too. I'm gonna put a ride on ya. Get from California. Trying to make it a life. It's school that never taught ya. Dreams of my